Tesla has just unveiled its new lithium ion phosphate gigafactory in the United States. This will be one of the first lithium ion phosphate battery gigafactories that's built in America and it will provide Tesla with much cheaper batteries than what it's currently making right now. The question is, will Tesla use these batteries in their EVs or will they simply put them into power walls and mega packs? Well, I'll get into those details. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. Great to have you with us. Tesla, they're going to be building, well, they've already built a lithium ion phosphate battery factory. And what's happened is Tesla's bought all the equipment from China. CATL or CATL as some people call them, they're the biggest battery company in the world. And they actually started making lithium ion phosphate batteries a long time ago. Ironically, the Chinese ended up taking that technology from the United States, right? It was invented by some US dudes. They invented lithium ion phosphate batteries. No one in America really took it seriously. The Chinese saw it and they went, uh, this is the shit. They literally did. <laughs> and, and they actually went, okay, we're gonna make lithium ion phosphate batteries. America just ignored it like it wasn't necessary, even though they're the ones who invented it. The Chinese then patented this lithium ion phosphate battery technology, which was invented by Americans, and in fact, with the help of Canadians as well. And then China just took over this, the battery, the global battery market. Now, more than 70% of the batteries that China produces are lithium ion phosphate batteries, which are cheaper to produce than all the batteries made in the US, which are predominantly lithium ternary batteries or NMC batteries with nickel, manganese, and cobalt. Of course, lithium ion phosphate batteries don't require nickel, don't require cobalt. So that's one of the key reasons why they are cheaper to manufacture. Initially, the West was like, well, lithium ion phosphate batteries suck. Guys, when I first started this channel four years, just over four years ago, people were saying to me, nah, lithium ion phosphate, why would you want a car with lithium ion phosphate batteries? That's a bad idea. Go back to my videos back then. I guarantee you'll see the comments on my videos of people saying, making these claims. I'm like, guys, you're so short-sighted. Think, the, think about it. They're improving the energy density. These batteries have improved enormously. And many journalists, automotive journalists in particular, were saying the same thing. I'm thinking, you guys are not paying any attention whatsoever. You've got no idea. They were saying EVs using lithium ion phosphate batteries are not the future. They won't take off. Well, what happens, right? <laughs> what happens is that now around 70%, in fact, more than 70% of the electric cars made in China use lithium ion phosphate batteries. And as for Tesla, more than 70% of Tesla sold worldwide use lithium ion phosphate batteries, which are incidentally not made in the US, but made in China. So now Tesla has purchased all these lithium ion phosphate battery production, uh, basically production lines, all the, all the machinery, robotics that are needed to make these lithium ion phosphate batteries. They've built a factory in Nevada. This factory will obviously produce those cells. So what Tesla are doing is Cadel, the biggest battery, biggest battery company in the world, who some people say have a monopoly because they own about 38% of global battery production, they are going to teach Tesla, basically Tesla Americans people, how to run these production lines. I believe that's actually happening right now. The staff from China are in are coming to the US, or they're in the US right now, teaching these Amer new American staff here at this factory in Nevada how to run these production lines, how to make these lithium ion phosphate batteries. And then when this is all process is finished, they will fly back to China and then Tesla will pay some kind of royalty to Cato could be 5%. That I've heard I've heard 5%, but I don't know if that's true. That's how this is all going to work now. But here's the thing. Even if Tesla does pay 5% royalty fee to Cato, it'll still be a lot cheaper from them to produce these batteries than Tesla's 4680 battery cells or 2170 battery cells. Um, Panasonic, getting batteries from Panasonic is still going to be a lot more expensive than making these new lithium ion phosphate batteries. What Tesla will do to begin with, they will use these batteries in their mega packs, right? Mega packs and their power wall. So the batteries you buy, you know, to provide your house with battery power backed up. Usually people have solar panels and then they'll buy their power wall and they'll use the power wall to actually collect that solar energy from during the day and then they'll use that power at night. So Tesla will use lithium ion phosphate batteries in 
those two places, mega packs, these giant batteries and power walls. Why won't they be using them in EVs? Well, they would be, but unfortunately this factory can only produce 10 gigawatt hours of batteries. That's what I'm hearing. At the start, it's only capable of producing 10 gigawatt hours. It's not enough really for Tesla to have enough to put in their mega packs and also power walls and then to use them in cars as well. And keep in mind, energy storage, you don't need high energy density. So the truth is lithium ion phosphate batteries, if you're gonna put them anywhere, first place you put them is in energy storage. Second place you put them is in EVs. The world doesn't use NMC batteries anymore in energy storage, right? So it makes sense for Tesla to go about it this way. What I'm thinking will happen is Tesla will do what Ford are doing. Ford are building a factory as well that's gonna produce 35 gigawatt hours of Cadle's lithium ion phosphate batteries. That's a lot bigger than the 10 gigawatt hours this factory. That's a lot more than the 10 gigawatt hours that this factory will be producing. So after some time, Tesla will go and increase production of these cells in order to put these battery cells in base models of their cars. So the new Tesla Model Y, the new Tesla Model 3, uh, both of these will have a base version of the, of the base, basically a cheaper version using lithium ion phosphate batteries. And of course, those cheaper versions, they'll have a bit less range, but they'll be more affordable. That's what I think Tesla are planning on doing. Now, guys, there is an article about this on electric. As you can see, I haven't actually gone to that article. But if I went to that article, which I don't suggest you do so, um, people are making some interesting comments about this. One of them said this. In fact, the most liked comment on electric said this, just in time for bankruptcy, Elon Musk spent 300 million US dollars to destroy not only himself, but the entire US EV, battery, solar, and wind industry. So how do you guys feel about that? Do you agree that um, Jody Nemo says Tesla just in time for bankruptcy? At this point in time, I think Johnny's being a little delusional, even though a lot of people agree with him, because Tesla still has billions of dollars in cash. And, um, and I believe bankruptcy is imminent, although Johnny would hope that it would be. Uh, followed, this was followed up by another liked comment by Eric Fisher. And Eric said, Elon Musk might go down as the most destructive person ever in the history of the world. Obviously, Vladimir Putin, irrelevant. Stalin killed millions. Nope, he's not as destructive as Elon Musk. What about, um, what about Hitler himself? No, nope, no, nope, it's definitely Elon Musk, apparently, according to Eric Fisher. Eric, you... Um, your, your brains might lack a little bit there. Anyhow, here's what someone else said. Carberry, if Elon claims that it is nearly ready to start production, that means it will never go into production. Mark my words. And everyone seems to have agreed with, um, with Carberry. Here's the thing though. This is just delusional Tesla hate. The reality is you build a factory, you buy the machinery from Cadle, the biggest battery company in the world, you move that machinery to the United States, then all you got to do is turn it on. It's not really that difficult. Now, of course, that's not that simple. You need lithium, you need phosphate, you need, you need the stuff that goes into the batteries. There's a bit more involved than that, but this is not overly complicated. It's not rocket science. They're not reinventing the wheel, put it that way. For stationary energy storage, these batteries are going to be a great move. And I do think there's a high probability that Tesla in future will manufacture higher energy density batteries from Cadle. Cadle make a lithium ion phosphate battery, which is not that far off the energy density of, their, of Tesla's 4680 battery. In fact, the energy density is close to 200 watt hours per kilogram and Tesla's 4680s are around 270 watt hours per kilogram. That's a new lithium ion phosphate battery capable of around about 700 kilowatt fast charging. I think it's a good chance that Tesla in the future will manufacture those batteries as well. They could have potentially one production line making the lower energy density, cheaper battery cells, another production line making the higher energy density lithium ion phosphate cells that will go into some of Tesla's more advanced electric cars. Guys, have I missed anything here? What's your take? Let us know in the comments. Um, thank you for watching. Bye-bye.